Hey what's up guys, in this video I'm going to look at applied materials and see if it's a good deal or not. I'm going to use financial statement analysis and intrinsic valuation model and ultimately try and come up with a fair price for their stock. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, I do a lot of stock analysis on this channel so if you're into that kind of thing hit that subscribe button to check out more videos like this one. Alright let's get started. Okay guys, so Applied Materials is kind of a semiconductor supplier company. They supply the raw materials to the semiconductor companies. That is their largest business segment here. As you can see on the left hand side of this graph, semiconductor system segment generates about $11.3 billion of revenue and about $3.7 billion in operating income. The Applied Global Services segment is described as a segment that provides solutions to optimize equipment, fab performance, and productivity. That segment is responsible for about $4.1 billion of revenue or about $1.1 billion of operating income. Their final segment is display and adjacent markets. That's the segment that sells the materials used to make LED displays or organic LED lights. So for that segment, they got about $1.6 billion in revenue and about $291 million in operating income. So if you compare the operating income to the revenue, it's pretty easy to see that the semiconductor system segment is the most profitable here. But the margins are not bad for any segment. The company is very well diversified in terms of currency. The revenue generated by region is quite a mix here. You've got 32% from China, 18% from Korea, 23% from Taiwan, 12% from Japan, and so on. So very well diversified. The U.S. really only accounts for 9% of their revenues. So it's a good stock to have in your portfolio to balance out a lot of your U.S. equities. Here's a quick look at Applied Materials stock. As you can see, the return on the stock has been pretty incredible over the past 10 years. Reflecting really the growth in those international markets that they rely so heavily on for their revenue. During the past year, in fact, it's gone up about 78.5%. And if we look at shorter time periods, we can see that, yeah, generally, the, it, it's been on a surge lately. It's currently trading at about 23 times next period's earnings. It, it does pay a dividend, but the yield is less than 1%, and it's about a $107 billion company as of right now. Let's have a look at Applied Materials Balance Sheet. And here I'm just looking at some liquidity ratios and some solvency ratios. They have a liabilities to assets ratio of about 52% which is pretty moderate, maybe even a little bit low. The debt to assets ratio is about 24%. That's pretty low leverage, so that's good to see. The current ratio is three, the quick ratio is 2.12. You know, both of these ratios tell you if the company has any kind of liquidity problems, meaning a, a, you know, a problem meeting their short-term obligations, and they don't have any problem I generally want to see a current ratio above one and hopefully same for the quick ratio and we're well above that. Interest coverage ratio is close to 20 so that's very good as well. They don't have any solvency issues here. In fact if you look at their cash on hand the cash by itself is enough to just pay off their debt whenever they please. So they are doing very well and it's interesting to note that only 40% of their assets are long term. Here's a DuPont analysis for applied materials. What this is is looking at return on equity or ROE and breaking it down into its three components. I like to use about five years to make sure I'm getting a representative sample of their profitability. And what we can see here is a pretty impressive return on equity for the company ranging from 22% at the low point 
all the way up to close to 50% in 2017. So very impressive ROE. It's worth noting that that return on equity is not really driven by leverage or anything. You know, they do have some debt, but that's not what they're using mostly here with the low equity multiplier. What they have here is mostly pretty impressive margins when you look at net income margin. For every dollar of sales, how much profit do they generate? And for applied materials, it looks to be pretty consistent, anywhere from 16 to 24 cents for every dollar of sales they have. Very impressive, very consistent, which I like to see. Asset turnover varies a little bit more, but overall it's it's looking like around 0.85, maybe 0.9 on average, meaning for every dollar of assets in place, they are able to generate, you know, 85 or 90 cents of sales every year. So, you know, when you look at all these factors together, that's what determines the return on equity. But not all of them are created equal. Once again, I highlight the fact here that they have impressive margins and pretty good asset turnover. And those are the two factors I really like to see driving ROE rather than just debt. So yeah, it's excellent profitability. I would like to be invested in a company like this for sure. We got to see about the valuation though. What I'm looking at here is revenue growth over time with the company trading at about 23 times next period's earnings. I can tell you right away it's not going to be a good deal unless they have a little growth. They don't need a lot of growth but they need a little bit of growth there with a PE ratio like that. And so what I can see here is really insane growth you know in the earlier part of the decade. In 2013 there about seven and a half billion dollars of revenue kicking it up to about $14.7 in just four years, pretty much doubling. But after that point, I see kind of a bumpier road, but you know, more or less no growth over the past four years. Another way to grow is to simply charge more for your product or cut your cost. So what I can see here with gross margin is that they're pretty consistent, although that margin has increased from 10 years ago. It looks to be around... 44 maybe 45 percent which is very impressive but i'm not sure how much more room they have to improve that as far as operating margins it's a similar story as they grew they probably gained economies of scale they probably became more efficient and that led to higher operating margins uh, i'm not sure how much higher they can push them though all right, guys, so at this point, it looks like Applied Materials has had incredible growth, but that it seems to have slowed down. What's going to happen going forward? Well, I'm going to look at this analyst forecast data here. So what I can see here is that they're expected to grow their revenues by close to 15% next year. And then it's kind of going to drop off there to 65 you know, 5.6%. So I'm going to use these values in my intrinsic valuation model. Okay, so it's time to estimate the fair value of applied materials using an intrinsic valuation model. I'm going to use the free cash flow to equity model. To make the model work, I need to rely on a few assumptions here. One thing I have to forecast is 10 years worth of free cash flows to equity. That's going to be a process. I'm going to walk you through that. But just understand that it's going to begin with forecasting revenues. And to do that, I'm going to be relying on those analyst forecasts that we just went through. Once I estimate what the free cash flows are going to be for the next 10 years, I'm going to discount them back to present value using a discount rate. So we will add up the present value of all those cash flows. We're going to add up the cash on hand. And we're going to add the terminal value of the company after 10 years. Put it all together and figure out what is the fair value for applied materials. Okay, so before I estimate all of that, I need to get a sense of their reinvestment needs. This will definitely factor into my model. Uh, you can see here their primary reinvestment is R&D expense, which isn't really classified as an investment using the accounting rules. Uh, they invest very little in capital expenditures. 
And in fact, they really don't do any acquisitions. You saw they did a big acquisition for about $4 billion in 2012. So this is important to keep in mind. They really don't need much for reinvestment. So here is the 10-year path I see for Applied Materials. What I've done here with their revenue growth is plugged in the forecast we saw from the analyst for the next three years. After that is really anyone's guess. No one's forecasting beyond that. I've plugged in you know, a little bit more conservative values here, assuming growth tapers off. This gives me a stream of revenues. Now to get from revenues to profit or net income, I need a net income margin. Their historical average using the past 10 or past 7 years is about 19%. Uh, I've used 21%, which is a little more optimistic, but just understand, you know, as they've gotten larger, they've gained economies of scale, so I don't think it's that unrealistic to assume their margins are going to be, you know, higher than they have been in the past. So that gives us a stream of profits, you know, accounting profits net income but to get from there to free cash flows to equity holders i need to subtract some kind of reinvestment needs for the company um, given their higher growth rate in the first couple of years i have a higher reinvestment rate for the company but after that you can see reinvestment really drops off there really not a significant amount there 10 percent all the way down to eight percent so this is really justified when you look at that chart of reinvestments. Most of their, quote, reinvestments are in R&D, which isn't really an investment for accounting purposes. So I feel comfortable with this low rate of reinvestments. I don't think I'm being overly optimistic. And that gives me a stream of free cash flows to equity for the next 10 years. Given that stream of cash flows, let's figure out the fair value of the stock. Okay guys, so here's the cash flows. I discount them back to present value using a 7.5% discount rate. There is our terminal value, which I also discount back to present value. This gives us a total firm value of about $83 billion. And you can see the breakdown there for yourself. That means the intrinsic value per share is about $91.50. Unfortunately, the stock is currently trading at $116, making it not really an attractive buy option right now. On the other hand, if I make one simple change here, if I change the discount rate to be 6%, the fair value then becomes about $125 per share, making the stock slightly undervalued. So it really depends there on the discount rate. One way of interpreting the discount rate is that it is a required rate of return. So if all of the assumptions in our model hold true and you want a 6% return on your investment, well, you're definitely going to get it at the current prices at right now. But you're not going to be able to achieve a 7.5% return. One last factor here is insider trading activity. And what's very interesting here is in the past year and even the past three months, you have more insiders buying than selling. And when you look at the number of shares involved, it's pretty significant here. You have more than twice as many shares being bought in the past three months compared to shares sold. That's quite a positive signal. So when I see insiders selling shares, that's not always negative. I mean, hey, you're an insider, your stock price quadruples, who wouldn't sell? A lot of people would sell, take your profits. But these insiders, consider this guys, they already own lots of shares of the stock and yet they're buying more. Uh, that's a pretty positive signal. All right guys, so here are my final thoughts on applied materials. First thought is always to hit that like button. I really appreciate it, it helps the channel a lot. But okay, Applied Materials, number one, I was pretty impressed with their balance sheet. They really don't have any liquidity concerns. They don't really have any solvency issues. They can pay their debt off whenever they please. So I really like that. I also like the DuPont analysis. I like what I saw there. They have very impressive business going on. They generate really fat profit margins. So I definitely want to own the company. 
The free cash flow to equity model says that no, I probably should not buy the company. However, you got to look at that insider trading data. It's very strong. Uh, it's a good indicator if you ask me. And so I'm pretty torn, to be honest. Uh, the model says no, but it is a great company. It's better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. So I would like to get in on this company. And the insiders are certainly giving me some reason to do that. So I'm actually up in the air. I'm really not sure what to do here. I might just keep an eye on it and see if the price can come down. But it's definitely an interesting stock. Let me know what you guys are going to do in the comments below. I always like to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching.